Can we go old school for just a minute? Now listen. Now you you gotta you gotta you might have to get in the aisle on this one. You may have to move. So look at your neighbor and say you may have to move on this one. Now ask them say 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 do you feel like moving? Now if they say no, then go sit by somebody else. You gotta clap. You gotta clap. Y'all ready? Um, before we um, before we proceed, um, our mammogram bus event was a success on yesterday. I think the mammogram bus got filled. The ladies came and they got checked out. Come on, come on, give it up, give it up, give it up, give it up. They got checked out, so we are excited about that. Um, um, May is is it lupus month? Is the month of May lupus month? All right. Um, and we won't get into all the particulars, but um, you can look up lupus, all right? It's a disease that, a uh, common disease that so many people um, deal with every single day. Um, but we are excited, and we give God praise for strengthening someone or someone you may know that are dealing with lupus, amen? So we um asking God for continued strength in that regard. Um, we, we are excited about our, um, our Tidgets, and I gave it his name, T-G-I-T. Thank God it's Thursdays. It's our teen night. Last Thursday was amazing. So give God praise. So many teens came out. 
ages 11 to 17. Come on, clap it up for our youth. Clap it up for our youth. Come on, come on, come on. So we are excited about that. Um, if you have youth, I want you to bring them on Thursdays, all right? Um, 11 years old to 17 year olds, we want you to come and we're just trying to help you as parents, right? We all need help. Raise your hand if you need some help every now and again, right? All right. They can't get the help if they don't come. So we want you to have them here. They have to be here on time. So we actually you have them here by 645 because the doors over at the multi-purpose or Ogberg place, um, they will close at 7 and there's no entry um, once the doors is closed. That goes for everybody. Amen? amen. And amen, right? Okay. So we're excited about that. And also, too, to all of our live viewers, now for you ones out of town, um, you're out of town, we appreciate you. We had some technical difficulties last week during the weekday services um, with our Facebook Live. Um, I've been told that we got all the kinks out. Um, so give God praise for getting all the kinks out, right? But anytime you deal with something technical, right, anything can go just wrong, like on planet Earth. Like something can go and it can affect something technical. So thank you for your um, support. But you ones that are in the city um, and you just want to lay in your bed, um, that's what you get, right? But no, we love you. We thank God for you. But if you are here, we want you to come and be in. The, let me tell you something. The Bible says don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Amen. You, you ain't read. I need to show you that scripture. Right. That means you need to come to the house. Right. So people say I can go to church at home. No, you cannot. Right. It's something about being around men and women. Um, and I'm not going to say just even Christian men and women, but just men and women that, hey, you know what? I got some struggles. Um, I'm going through some stuff, but I can relate to one of my brothers or my sisters going through the. It's nothing like a testimony. You know, I, I kind of miss testimony service somewhat. I'm not going to start it back up. That's not going to happen. Um, I don't miss it that much, right? But I, I used to love a, a real testimony of somebody saying, you know, this is what I was going through, and God had the nerve to bring me out of that situation. Now, if, is there any testimonies in the house? You can't come tell it, but you ought to just say, God, I'm going to praise you. And somebody on your row ought to say, you, you, you got a real testimony. But, but, but now, we're we not going to testify, but just tell somebody on your row, I don't look like what I done been through. Tell them if you only knew my story and all the hello that I done been through lately, you don't even know why I would have showed up. But tell them I came for a reason. I came to give God my best. Our best praise. So we thank you. We love you. We appreciate you. Um, I'm excited. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for this moment, this time, this opportunity to share with your sons and your daughters. Lord, you get the glory. Not my will. Your will be done. Allow somebody that don't know you to be saved and from the pardoning of their sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, clap your hands. While you're standing, Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 6. Hebrews chapter 11. Uh, verse number 6, Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 6. It's going to be for our reading on this morning. The Bible says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. Him being who? For he that cometh to who? Must believe that he, he being who? Is, and that he, he being who? Is a rewarder of them that diligently seek. Him, him being God. I'll read it again. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. May God have a blessing to the reading, hearing, most importantly, the obedience of his word. You can take your seat. We're excited. Y'all, we've been dealing with this um, faith series. Have you been learning? Have you been learning uh, with the faith? Come on. Have you really been learning? All right. All um, right. I'm, I'm, I'm going to take my time with, with this series because um, it is critical for you to understand, and that's why I wanted to read that passage of scripture, that without faith, it is impossible to please God, right? Um, many of us are trying to please God without having faith in God, right? Um, so many people believe God, but believing God is not the same as having faith in God. Matter of fact, I believe the, the disciples put it best. They, they said, Lord, we, we, we believe, right? Lord, we believe, but help our unbelief. 
right? Is there anybody here other than, than myself that you've, you've believed God for something, but you have struggled in areas of unbelief? Raise your hand if you've ever been there. Like, I, I, I believe God because I, I know what he can do. I, I, I've seen him do it, but I am struggling with, with areas of, of unbelief. And you got to understand, Satan always wants to try to get you to not believe or to have doubt, right, or to cause you to fear. You know, if, if you're not careful, you, you'll find yourself saying, well, what if God don't do it? But I'm, I'm kind of the opposite. You know, I always think, well, what if God do it? Right? Since, since I got to believe one or the other, I choose to believe that it is so and, and so it is. Are y'all going to pray with me? Right? Um, I think one thing, one reason why we struggle with faith is we, we try to figure out God. You know, and it, it can be easy to fall into that because... On, on one hand, God, you, you did this, and you didn't have to do it, and you did it so easy. I thought it was so hard. It was so difficult, and it was so frustrating, but you did it on this hand, but then on this hand, you, it ain't that you didn't do it. You didn't do what I wanted you to do. I need you to catch that. See, family, it's, it's never that God didn't do it. It's just he didn't do what you wanted him to do when you wanted him to do it. So now if, if, if you're not careful, you, you see, and, and, and I'm getting ahead of myself, but when, 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 when I, I don't want to go there because it, it'll, it'll, if, if I go there, then I'm going to have to go there. And, I, and it's too early. I ain't going to go there. So let me go. So we, are y'all still with me? All right. Um, put this in your notes real quick. Believing is the starting point. Faith requires action. We talked about how authority must be exercised. You can go on our live Facebook page and kind of see our previous services um, to kind of pick you up to speed, right? Um, talked about how, how faith works. But today we want to talk about um, Faith requires time to grow. And I really want y'all to pay close attention to this. And, um, um, and we're going to get to the wedding. I'm excited. Give it up for Amanda and Keith. They're getting ready to do their thing. Right? We're excited about that. But I, I really want you to focus. I want you to take great notes. I'm going to do my best not to get too excited. But when I was studying this, man, um, it's so much just mm, good information. And, and remember, family, without faith, you cannot please God. Are you with me? So say faith, faith needs time to grow. Say it again. Say faith, faith needs time to grow. Go to say Matthew chapter 9, verse number 20. We're going to move kind of quick. Say Matthew chapter 9, verse number 20. Say Matthew chapter 9, verse number 20. Watch what it says. And uh, behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood, um, 12 years, came behind him, talking about Jesus, and touched the hem of his garment, right? Very familiar passage of scripture, right? We have went over this, we have taught this, we have studied this. Um, where did this woman get the belief that if she touched Jesus' clothes, she could be made whole? Probably she heard about it. Probably, right? And we get that from in Romans chapter 10, verse number 17, it says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So this woman's faith got activated because she heard about Jesus. You're here today because at some point in your life, you what? You heard about, you heard about Jesus. Are y'all with me? Now, her reason for touching Jesus' clothes was because she believed um, um, i be made whole if I can touch it. That, that was her belief, Elder. She, she believed if, if I could touch his, the, the hem of his garment, I would be made whole. Are y'all praying with me? She wasn't concerned about people. She wasn't concerned about protocol. All she knew was that she had heard 
And that's what sparked her belief, but it turned into faith once she put it into action. Are y'all with me? The woman had to believe and act upon what she believed. She believed it, then she acted upon. She, she, she didn't just believe. We gave you so many illustrations again. Um, 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 she, she did not just say, hey, I, I believe I can touch his garment and, and hopefully he knows I'm here. You know, hopefully, you know, somebody else see that I'm going through and they go tell him and then he come and he check on me because I'm really going through. No, no, no. She said, I believe if I can touch him his garment, I'll be made what? Are y'all praying with me? Now watch this. See, believing did not change the situation. The change did not come until she did what she believed. Her believing didn't see. A lot of you are struggling because you're like, God, I believe you. God, I trust you. God, I'm believing. And your situation ain't going to change. You have to act upon what you believe. Are y'all praying with me? Uh, tell three people on your road, a change is coming. Come on, tell them a change is coming. It's been a long Long time coming, but I, I know a change is going to come. Oh, yes, it will. I was. No, see, look, you got now. Tell them a change is going to come. Now, be, because you have the complete story, you know that it was true. But it was just as true before she touched him as it was after she touched him. It was true even before she touched his, his garment. However, it was the touching of him based on what she believed that gave her, somebody say personally, say it again, say personally, the benefit of what she believed. If she had just believed it, it still wouldn't have been true. But it would have not have changed her circumstance. Her, her belief in the vicinity of Jesus, she still had to put forth action. See, waiting is an action. Some people walk away believing it ain't going to happen, I'm not going to wait. But in others, I'm waiting. See, let me tell you something. It's, it's so easy to. It, feel, it feels normal to walk away. The average person walks away. But there ain't nothing like somebody that up. Zacchaeus, he climbed the sycamore tree. And he sat in it and he He still activated his faith. He waited because he got in position. I don't want to get off my message, but somebody here, all you got to do is get in position. Jesus is going to see you once you get in position. He never saw, that helped me right there. He never saw Zacchaeus where he was. But he had to get in position to wait. So Jesus, he walking, he doing his thing, and he happened to look up. And he says, Zacchaeus, come down. That's why right, he, he knew his name. Can I tell you something? The Lord knows your name. You just got to get a position so he can call you. Some of y'all, you missed what I just said. See, some of you moving around so much. When all you need to do is be still and recognize that God is God. And he getting ready to call you. But if you keep, if you keep moving, how he going to find you? Tell somebody, I'm willing to wait until my change comes. Now, not waiting, doubting, not waiting, complaining, but waiting, saying, it's getting ready to happen. Yeah, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know when, but, but, but and, and really honest, I don't know why, but, but I know he promised it to me, and I don't know he would, why would God promise something to me with, you know what's amazing? When God promised you something when you ain't even got it right, everybody should have shouted right there. See, 
I know Mr. Do Right always, you know, he does he do right. You know, he he get the confirmation from God. But does anybody here, God ever let you know something and you was in the midst, you was in the midst of a whole bunch of crazy stuff, and he let you know I still got you. I'm still gonna look out for you. I'm Okay, I'm 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 going to, I'm I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay, are y'all praying with me? Now, write this down. Faith will produce results. Faith will produce results. We got to give it time to grow. Anybody, anybody ever had a garden? Anybody ever planted, raised on a farm? Just raise your hand. Right, 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 right. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. You plant the seed, and you don't get up the next morning and expect the harvest. When you plant the seed, you got to get a seed time to what? The vegetables that you ate yesterday or whenever you eat them, it took time for it to, to grow. We got to give our faith time to grow. See, in the Bible, there's two types of faith. It's little faith and it's great faith. That's the only, that's the only type of faith. So little faith has to grow and develop into Great faith. Let me tell you how to happen. When you trust God to do the little. See, a lot of y'all overlooking the little because you're trying to get to the great. But God needs to know I can trust you at, at, at the first step because the fourth step going to be crazy. And when you get to the seventh step, it's going to be like, are you kidding me? But by the time you get to step number eight, everything going to be the change around for the better. But I got to trust you at step are y'all with me? Okay, 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 okay. Over time, faith will produce results, but you must stay with it. Tell somebody, stay with faith. Say, say, look at me when I'm talking to you. Stay with faith. See, what happens is we get caught up in the euphoria of all the expectations of what faith can produce. And, and, and that's a big word. How can I? We, we, we get caught up in, 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 in the potentials or the possibilities of faith. Wow, God can do this, and we're just, oh, my God, I'm just, oh, I'm believing God to, huh. and we get so motivated, but we don't give it time to grow. So we get up every day looking for a harvest, when the harvest may come in six months. It may come in six years, but I'm still holding on to my faith. Now, you might say, well, I don't want to wait six years. I don't care what you want to wait for. And I'm going to tell you why, because it was times in my life that I wanted something because I wanted it. But God knew I wasn't ready for it. Why would a father give a child something that they're not ready for that would harm them instead of help them? You would catch that on your way home on Fond du Lac, right, right? Matter of fact, somebody here, you ought to give God some radical praise that he did not give you what you asked for. Yeah, yeah, think about that for a minute. God, I thank you for not giving me what I asked for because I just asked to be asking. But you knew it wasn't in my best. God, thank you for looking out for me. Anybody got that prayer? God, I said, just tell them, say, God, thank you for looking out for me. Are y'all praying with me? Now watch this. We make an attempt to exercise faith, but when we don't see immediate results, we give up. Tell somebody, stay with it. See, many of us are simply trying faith as a gimmick. You want to see if it's going to work, and faith isn't what you see. Hebrews 11 and 1. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. They'll put it on the screen. The evidence of things not seen. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The evidence is you can't see it. See, when you can't see it, it keeps you trusting. It keeps you leaning. It keeps you depending. It keeps you on your face before the Lord because I can't see it. If I can see it, why well, I got to hope for it? Why well, I got to believe for it? Why well, I got to trust God? Some of you want a million dollars. God can't trust you with it. And if you be honest, you can't trust yourself. Huh. We, we think we don't see you on a snow day. Let you get a million dollars. Because you, 
You think you got it now. It's good for some of you every week. You got to depend on that check to come through every week. Every week. You want to know what to do? It keep you here every week. Like, man, I got to go to church. Why? I got to get that check Tuesday. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Are y'all with me? All right, all right. Tell somebody, stay with faith. Say, stay with faith. See, faith isn't what you see, it's what you believe and act upon. So you're trying to see it. And because you don't see it, it causes you to doubt. And this is what has crippled so many of us. See, you must, you must be completely sold out. Tell somebody, I'm sold out. I'm sold out. Say, I got crazy faith. I got, crazy. I got Prozac faith. I got stupid faith. That's impossible. And, 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 and it's impossible, but possible. It's impossible under my own agenda. But it's possible with God. On my own, I can never make sense of it. But activating my faith in him, now those doors got to come open. Why? Because I can't figure out how to push it open. He don't have to push it open. He sets one before me. Does that make sense? Okay. <laughs> Tell somebody it's possible and it's going to be mine. But now, now y'all, 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 I know Keita believed it, Zach believed it, a couple of other y'all, like, ah, nah, nah, nah. Whenever you declare something, you need to declare it boldly. What you scared of? You, well, I, I, I believe it. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, no, no. You, 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 you got to have a certain, you got to, you got to, you got to have a certain, I, I believe it. Somebody say, I believe it. It is possible. It shall be mine. Say it again. Say, I believe it. It is possible. It shall be mine. Say it again. I believe it. It is possible. It shall be mine. Now, what's amazing to me is I shouldn't have to pump you and prime you because you know what God did for you. You know what you prayed for and it looked like it wasn't going to happen. And now you got it. You ought to be able to say, God, I thank you and I believe that it's going to happen. And I'm activating my faith by responding to what I believe. I'm putting it in action. Say, I'm putting it in action. I got to speak it every day faith. That's kind of faith. Like I got to speak it every day, faith. Every day, you ought to just, you ought to just speak some stuff. You ought to just despair. You ought, you ought to just, you ought to just, you ought to just speak, declare some stuff over your life every single day. You ought to just write it down and read it. You ought to post it on your window. You ought to put it in your bathroom, on your refrigerator. You ought to do whatever you can do. Every day, faith. Say, 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 I got to speak it every day, faith. Say, I got to write it down every day, faith. Say, I got to go test drive it kind of faith. Oh, I felt that on my right side. Yeah, I got to go test drive it kind of faith. Right, right. I got to go look at a newly built home kind of faith. With a low credit score, might I add, kind of. You got to have a go walk on the land kind of faith. You got to have a kind of faith. And this ain't for everybody, so I don't want to mess you up. But if you, if, if this is only for you that really, really, really want to step out on your faith, you need to go to the land that you want to build your house on. Watch this. Get you a few lawn chairs. Get you a portable grill. Invite people over. I'm not being funny. You ought to invite people over and, 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 and tell them, yeah, someplace way, someplace just beautiful. And when they pull up and they come and, and, and tell them, you know, bring, wear your play clothes. Put your little volleyball net up. On the land. Ain't nothing on it. But it's where you dream of building your home and you believe in it. And when they get out, say, we having a party. How your food? How your chair? They're going to be like, what are we doing? Oh, this, this. Oh, I just ain't got the house yet, but it's mine. Am I talking to anybody? You ain't, you ain't, you, you ain't got it yet, but you declaring. 
I got two people over here. I'm going to talk to this side. Is there anybody? This is the new hood section. Is there anybody over here? You ain't got it yet, but you declaring by faith it is mine. Now, now, to some of you, it don't make sense. I got a house that me, my wife, and my kids, we just drive by. They're in the process of building it now. Beautiful home. I ain't going to tell you where it's at because I don't want you to go look at it. <laughs> and we go by there. Every day when I pick my kids up from school, they say, hey, Dad, you want to go by the house? I'm just, I'm just driving. Just driving. One day I got out, and I was just kind of walking around. And I'm not saying I'm going to get the house. I'm not saying I'm not going to get the house. If I do get it, I ain't going to tell you. But we just kind of walking around and just kind of looking at some people in the neighborhood. They were like, hey, how's it going? And I, hey, how's it going? How you doing, sir? I'm doing great. Just to, I like to see, watch this, blessings in the process. Some of you didn't catch what I... See, if you're not careful, you want it once it's done, once it's established. See, most people want something, you know, they want to be a part of it when it get to that level. Ooh, this is nice. No, I want you to start when I got nothing but dirt. I want you to start when I ain't even got a down pay. I want you to bless God and the, tell somebody, bless me in my process. See, a lot of y'all don't understand. You got to learn how to bless God in the process. Why you want to wait to it? I don't want nobody to love me when I got it all the way right. I want baby girl. She was a ride or die with me when I was nothing. But when, am I talking to anybody? You ought to give God praise right now for the process that you're going through. Some of y'all ain't going to say nothing. That's cool. I'll shout by myself. You ought to give God some glory for the process. There is nothing greater than looking back over your life and saying, God has brought me from a mighty long way. Is there any saints in the house that God has brought you from a mighty? Yeah, praise him in the process. Praise him in the, oh, come on. I, I, can't, I can't stay there too long. Now watch this. Watch this. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Listen, you, you have, you have, oh, I just got excited. Oh. Mm. Praising him in the process. Ain't hey, he supposed to be shouting like I'm shouting. I'm shouting like it's already done. He ain't even got started. But I, is there anybody here? He ain't even got started yet. But hey, you going to shout in the Bro, it's all a process. It don't feel good. It don't make sense. You don't understand it. You even said, why it have to happen to me? Baby girl, it had to happen to you because you built for it. Listen, you was built to last. Everything that the enemy I'm talking to some. Everything that the enemy tried to bring into your life to make you doubt, you beat it every single time. Trust God in the process. Touch two people say it's just the process. Praise them in the process. Praise them in the... Tell them, don't wait till the battle is over. Tell them, don't, don't. Don't, tell them, don't. Don't wait till after you win. Praise them now because you already won. Praise them in the... In the process. Ha. Praise them. Praise them in the... In the process, I vow to praise you through the good and through the bad. I vow to praise you whether I'm happy or whether I'm sad. Said I made up in my mind I'll bless your name at all times. And your praise will continually be in, in my mouth. My soul will make her boast in the law. The humble will hear thereof and be glad. Shake your neighbor and say magnify the Lord with me because I'm praising him in the process. Sit down. I gotta I gotta yeah 
Why you shout like that? I'm not shouting because I feel good, but I'm shouting because I got the praise them while I'm going through. The more I praise them, the easier it is for me to get through it. The more I say, God, I trust you, the easier it is for me to handle what I'm dealing with. Praise him in, in the process. Oh, my God. Ah, praise him in the process. Process. Yeah. Yeah, God, I hear you. I'm a... Yeah. I don't understand it, but I'm going to praise you in it. Don't feel good, but I bet you I praise you in it. Don't understand why I got to go through it, but I'm going to praise you. Somebody ought to open your mouth and say, God, I'll praise you in the process. So, sit down, y'all, you. Oh. Oh. Woo. Oh, man. Oh. Okay. Okay. I need you to catch this. Listen. You, you must understand that you have, you have an adversary. You got somebody fighting against you. And I think a lot of times we, we forget about or, or we don't recognize or not even we don't under, understand like the enemy is fighting against you the devil is saying you got such a great purpose I have to fight I, I, I can't let you if if you if 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 you get to where God has for you do you know do you I got to try. Why do you think he's fighting you so hard? It's because yo. Your legacy is that great. If your future wasn't that bright, he wouldn't be bothering you like he is. So he does everything. So so put it in your notes. You have an adversary. Now, remember, watch this. You have an adversary, and he is going to stand in the road of your life and resist you on every step of the way. You have to fight your way through it. Tell somebody, you got to fight your way through it. Look at what 1 Timothy 6 and 12 says. Real quick, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse number 12. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse number 12. Watch what it say. Fight the good fight of... This is, this is a faith fight. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. See, family, during this faith fight, if it don't happen when you want it, want it to happen, you get frustrated because you're not laying hold to eternal life. You're trying to lay hold to eternal earth. And earth ain't going to last forever. So you you trying to hold on to some stuff that means so much to you here, but but you want to know why it's yours? Because you didn't put it here. I was talking with my little sister this morning, Jovinia, and she said something so powerful. She said, you know, when we when we lose loved ones near and dear to us, one thing we 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 say, we said this about Murph, right? How he served. Who did he serve? Serve the Lord, right? How he cleaned and how he shoveled and how he helped in this, how he did that. Sir, we talk about Daytona, right, who we just recently lost. And what, what was she? She served. Sweet, kind, always willing to help. Anytime we had an event over in Agro Place or the multi-purpose facility, as you, we used to call it, you, 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 she, she, she served. She was just willing to 
serve. She was happy to serve. Who was she doing it for? I want you to picture the one you serve coming to you saying, You've been an incredible servant and representative of me on earth. But I'm giving you an opportunity to come be with the one you've been serving. Wait, wait, wait before you shout. <clears throat> and the beauty of this holiness and the beauty of his splendor the one I've been serving. The one I've dedicated my life to. The one I gave up some things in the world that I like, but I knew went against him, and I couldn't really serve him if I held on to these things. I gave up all that, and now I got a chance to be with What choice would you make? And you might say, well, what about my wife? What about my kids? No, what about his splendor? What about his majesty? This is the, this is the one. So a lot of times we, we can't look at it of holding on to eternal earth. Because that's not scripture. Watch what that scripture just said. Same scripture. Where to thou are called. Fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many. Tell somebody, it's the fight of faith. Say it again, it's the fight of faith. Are, are y'all still with me? Now, 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 watch this. You have to give it everything you have if you want to win. Say, give it all you got. You have to stay with it until it produces results. Tell somebody, stay with it. I don't know if y'all caught that. You got to stay with it until it produces results. You got to stay with it until it produces results. You got to stay with it until it produces results. I tell every woman that when they have a child, how they should breastfeed that child, right? And I express to them and her and her husband, it's important because God gave you something in you that's the best thing possible. Are y'all praying with me for that child? And they say, Pastor, they told my wife, well, you know, they won't latch on and I don't produce milk and I don't do this. And so they give up too easily. They don't stay with it. But if you stay with it, if they just stay with an elder, they can produce something that's in them, but it will never come out if they don't stay with it. I'm, I'm, I'm really preaching now. I don't know if y'all, all the breastfed babies ought to give God praise because your mama stayed. See, whenever it's given to you, you don't appreciate it. Say, yes, I do. No, you don't. If somebody give you a million dollars, you may be grateful. But if you earned a million dollars, you will, you will value it so much more because you knew what it took. I don't know who I'm talking to, but you have earned a right to be called Christian. You have earned the right to have a relationship with God our Father. You have earned a right to be called his son and or his daughter. Oh, I'm preaching to myself. You have earned a right that old things are passed away and all things are become new. You have earned a divine right to say, I belong to God. Think about what you had to fight and had to go through to get to where you are to earn that right. Don't you let a devil in hell tell you you are not worthy, that God ain't going to bring you out. You ought to give him glory even right now and say, God, you are worthy of all my praise. <laughs> Tell somebody, I earned it. Oh, y'all praying with me. So, 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 so. Oh, we, we almost done, we almost done. Tell somebody, stay with it. Until it produces results. Stay with it until it works. And in the process, you will be criticized, falsely accused, misunderstood, but... You have to be convinced. Somebody shout, I'm convinced. I'm convinced. 
Say it like you got an attitude. I am convinced. Put your hand on your hip and move your neck and say, I am convinced. I'm convinced. Listen, you can't let nothing get in the way of you putting forth action into what you believe. So I came this morning real simply. Um, I came to, 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 to bind some stuff. I came to let the devil in hell know he is a liar and the truth ain't in him. Now, before I finish in these last few flitting moments, I need at least 25 people. That can hold your fist up, and it ain't got to be the right one or the left one, but just say, Pastor, I'm with you. We're going to buy some stuff today. I need one person on every row to look at your row. If you held that fist up and say, we're getting ready to buy some stuff today. Tell them, because I'm convinced that God getting ready to do the supernatural. See, listen, how many believe that this week coming up, God going to put his super on top of your natural and some crazy blessings getting ready to flow? If you don't believe it, don't say nothing, sit there, keep looking at me. But if you believe it, open your mouth and give God praise. Tell your neighbor, I am convinced. Say again, I am convinced. Tell them, I am convinced. We getting ready to buy some stuff. This is what we're going to buy. We're going to buy in doubt. Say, doubt, get out of here. Say fear, get out of here. Say depression, get out of here. Say anxiety, get out of here. Laziness, get out of here. Past hurt, get out of here. Low self-esteem, get out of here. The spirit of offense, get out of here. Low level performing, get out of here. Now say, get out of here in the name of Jesus. Say, I bind you by the name of Jesus. I bind you with the blood of Jesus. If you believe it, scream like you're about to lose your mind. So watch this. I am convinced. Now, if what I go over, you're convinced of, I want you just to begin to really give God praise. Now listen, 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 listen. I don't want you to believe it with me. I want you to activate it with a praise. Are y'all with me? I am convinced that you will succeed. I am convinced that chains are falling off. I am convinced that poverty and lack it's the thing of the past. Some of y'all ain't shouted yet. I am convinced that you will make better decisions for you and your family. I am convinced that you are a new creature. And all things are passed away. And all things are made new. I'm convinced that you're the lender and no longer the borrower. I'm convinced that you are debt free. And some of y'all still looking at me like I'm crazy. Are y'all praying with me? I am convinced, I am convinced, this for me, that the gymnasium will be paid before we even start digging for it. Somebody just shout for me because I got to finish preaching because somebody just shout for me. Say, say, pastor, I'm convinced, I'm convinced. Watch this, watch this, watch this. I am convinced that your children will be successful. I'm convinced that they will go on to college and graduate with honors. I am convinced that the shame of your past is the reason you're going to get double. I'm talking to somebody. Don't believe me. Laugh at me. Think I'm crazy. Stay away from me. Don't invite me. Keep telling me you don't want to hear all that. The more you tell me you don't want to hear it, the more I'm going to talk about it. I need them same 25 people. The more people tell you to shut up, say that's the louder I'm going to get. The more you get denied, the more you get denied, the more you get denied, the more convinced you have to become that God is in control. God is in. I got to get my faith time to grow. God, I'm sorry for not giving my faith time to, to grow. I got to let it develop. See, I saw what that person got, and I wanted what they had, but I, know, I don't know the years they've been waiting. I see that person going forth in ministry, and I want to go forth in ministry, but you don't know what they had to suffer to get to the place where they are right now. Yeah, you like how they pray, but you have no idea all the hell they had to go through. The hell that they've been through is what trained them how to pray like that. If you ain't ever been through nothing, you ain't going to pray like nothing. I'm talking to somebody, right? But is there anybody here, you done been through some crazy stuff. The only reason I pray like I pray is because of what I. We 
We almost done. Start with believing. Start with believing. Again, you gotta you, you have to start with with the believing part because it is the believing that puts you into position to act. But if all you do is believe, even though what you believe is true, I mean absolutely true, it would never change your circumstances. Quickly, if you look at St. Matthew chapter 9, verse number 27 and 28, when Jesus departed from uh, there, two blind men followed him. What did they do? They followed him. Following is an action. Did they put the, on the screen Matthew 9, 27 and 28? These two men followed Jesus. St. Matthew chapter 9, verse number 27, right? And when Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him crying and saying, thou son of David, have mercy on us. They followed him. They followed him. They followed him. What do the next verse says? Watch what it say. And when he was come into the house, the blind men came to him. He didn't even leave the blind men. You would think Jesus would have grabbed them by the hand and said, let me lead you, seeing that you can't see. Watch what it says. Same, same verse. And when he was come into the house, the blind men came to him. Jesus said unto them, believe ye that I am able to do this? They said unto him, yes, Lord. Yea, Lord. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can do it. Yeah. Yeah, that's why we're following you. That's why we came to the house that we wasn't an uninvited guest. They know them people at that house. Jesus was going to the house, but they, 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 they. They follow him there. Are y'all praying with me? And watch this. What did they do? They follow him. Following is an action. Crying out and, and, and saying, Son of David, have mercy on us. And when he had come into the house, the blind men came. Came is an action. Somebody say, that's an action. That's action. And Jesus says to them, do you believe that I'm able to do this? Now, catch this. They didn't say, Lord, well, we really don't know if you can do anything or not. Um, but it was such a hot day outside, and we figured we'd just kind of come, and this was a good opportunity for us to get out the sun, so we really don't know if you can help us or not, but we would appreciate it if you can. Uh, if, if you can't do it, we understand. Um, this is not what they said. See, Jesus asked them the question to activate their faith. Do you believe I can do this? Y'all watch me. Do you believe I can do this? Go back to the verse number 28. Do you believe I can do this? Go back to the verse number 28. And when he, he was coming to the house, the blind man came to him, and Jesus said unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this? They said unto him, Yea, Lord. What did he do? He activated their, their he knew what he was capable of. <laughs> Y'all missed it. The Lord even right now knows what he's capable of in your situation. But the question is, do you believe that he can do it? <laughs> Look at somebody and say, I got to believe God can do it. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. See, 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 you have to put forth action to show that you believe. Elder, saying you believe but ain't put forth no effort, that ain't faith. It's just belief. I believe my business is going to grow, but you don't market your business. And it don't grow. God, why it ain't growing it? Because you're not activating your faith. Are y'all praying with me? See, Jesus asked them the question to activate their faith. Look, look at the last part of verse 28. They said it to him, yes, Lord. Then in verse number 29 through 31. Look at verse 29. He says, according to your faith. It is interesting that he did not say according to your belief. He did not say to them, do you have faith for this? He asked the question, do you believe it? You believe I'm able to do it? And they said, yay, Lord, or yes, Lord. Then he said, according to your faith, not your belief. So what was their faith? Watch this. Two points. Their faith was that they cried out to him for mercy. First thing they did was cry out. The second thing is, they came, which was an action. If they had have stayed outside, they would have not received. They acted on what they believed. They believed that if they could get to Jesus, they could get some help. Somehow they had heard about Jesus, and they cried out for mercy. And then they acted. They came into the house. Jesus asked them, do you believe that I am able to do this? And they said, yes, Lord. He said, according to your faith. He did not say according to your believing. 
and yet it was their believing that put them in position to act. So faith is acting on what you believe. That's why I'm, I'm really harping on this series, family, because I want you to understand you got you to gotta act upon what you believe until you go after it. It's never going to manifest itself. If you believe you can have a healthy marriage after being so unhealthy, you got to act upon healthiness in regards to your marriage. You got to put it into action. It takes faith to even get saved. You got to believe that God forgave you of your sin. You got to believe that God, see, a lot of you say, well, 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 old things have passed away, but you always bring up old stuff. <laughs> so, no, it's not. It's not passed away. It's not. If your past keeps coming up from somebody, you need to cut off that somebody. Because I can't, if you continue to live in that here, it will transfer you living in that here. I'm going to say it again. It starts here. And if you let it fester here, it's going to end up going into your heart. Then it's going to. So now, that old thing that was passed away, because you keep letting people bring it up here, now it's going to take you back to it. And now look at you, you, you was that close to Jesus <laughs> when you gave it to him. Remember the woman last week, her son, she put her son on Elijah's bed. She put him on his bed and she said, I'm going to go, I'm going to talk to the prophet. And she got I would say she laid her son down, shut the door behind her. Send me a servant on a horse. Honey, it ain't, the, it ain't the new moon festival. It ain't the Sabbath. You can't go. I'm going. I'm going. So the servant gets there. He, he pulls up. She say, listen, don't stop and talk to nobody. <laughs> yes, ma'am. He goes. And he gets to the place. Gets to the mount. Elijah sees Gehazar, his adjutant, sees the woman. Hey, go see is everything okay with her, her husband, and her son. Gehazar, Gehazar goes. He says, hey, is everything okay? Now, she's down here. She's down here. She's down here, coming up to where they are. He meets her here, says, is everything okay? Her son is dead. She just laid him on Elijah's bed, shut the door behind her. He's dead. He says, is you, are you okay? Is your husband okay? Is your son okay? She says, it is well. She said, it is well. But I need to speak to, to Elijah. So she goes, she says, so Elijah, listen. <clears throat> Something crazy going on. She's crying. She bowed on his feet. What's going on? My son that you promised me that I wasn't even asking for. I was cool. I was financially well off. We was able to help and do for people. You promised me this son. Now that I have this son, he dies? So Elijah says, Gehazi, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go. I want you to go. Take, take my staff. Take my staff. Take my staff. Take my staff. And I want you to go and lay my staff on the boy. So you can sit down, Elder. So Elder Gehazi, you Gehazi today. So Gehazi goes on ahead of them. Now, you would think the woman would say, okay, well, he's going back. Let me go see what happened. 
she looks at Elijah and says, as God live, and as you live, I'm not going back to my house unless you go with me. So what does he do? He goes with her. When he get back, Gehazi runs and meets him and say, I put the staff on the boy, but he's still dead. So Elijah goes to the room, sees the boy, and shuts the door behind him. He lays on top of the boy, his hand upon his hand, chest upon his chest, face upon his face. The boy begins to get warm, but he's not up yet. Elijah gets up, and the Bible says he paces back and forth one time. Tell somebody, one time. <laughs> Say, God, do it for me one time. <laughs> Y'all miss what I just did. That was so slick, and I was walking like this there. You see, I had to walk on. Say, God, do it for me one time. <laughs> so then he went and laid back. Boy begin to sneeze. Two. But he sneezed seven. The number seven reps represents com total completion. What I'm trying to tell you is this woman, she believed, but she also activated her faith. Then after seven times, she picked the boy up. Gave him to his mama. He activated his his faith. She had faith in him. He had faith in God. Notice he has sent, but he had to go. Same man of God. It was his staff. But her faith knew, no, you, you got to go. Listen, you got to do what you got to do this one. You may not do them all. Surely as God lives and, and you live. Really what she was saying was, if God wasn't real and you weren't here, the has I be cool. But since God lives and you live, I need you to go with me. So she activated. Somebody, that's my time, it's 12 o'clock. Somebody is depending on you. Everybody look at me. You ones on your phone, you ones that's kind of just floating around. Yeah, you. I'm talking to you too. This is important. No, because you got somebody depending on you. And it may not be that important to you right now, but it's extremely important to them because their life is a hot mess because they connected with you. And if you get it right, they'll get it right. So now what you going to do? This is your time. This is your time to get it right. This is your time to, to lead by example. This is your time not to say, I believe, but Lord, help my Unbelief. Lord, help my unbelief. You got to activate your faith. You got to activate it. You got to step out on it. You got to step on it. It ain't going to just happen with you sitting there crying. And, uh, ain't nobody going to have no pity party for you. No. Activate your, that's just the truth. That's called reality. Activate it. Activate it. Activate it. Activate it. Activate it. Step out on it. And then we got to do it for you. Live for him. Everything is, a, is an emergency when we want what we want. But after God do it, if we ain't careful, we go right back to it. You know how I know that to be true? Because I did it. Will you come and activate your faith? Will you? Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. To you visitors, they wouldn't come and just throw money at me. She came and she gave a $10 seed. She, 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 she's activating something. Activating something. That makes sense what I just said? I got to activate. I got to activate. God, that word, you, that word you spoke to me, I believe that word. 
and I've been believing, but I, I struggle with my. Uh, it, it's not the part you believe in. It's the part that you, you're unbelieving. Your blessing is right there on the verge of your unbelief. Yes, it didn't go the way you wanted to go the last time, the time before that, the time before that. But, God, I'm trusting you for the next time. Is there anybody here, God, I'm trusting you for the next time? Come on, don't play with me. My, I, I, my, 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 my time is up. I, I'm tr God, I'm trusting you for the next time. So this ain't for everybody, but the same way that woman gave a $10 seed, I'm challenging you. I want you to do that same thing. I want you to get a $10 seed in your hand. Even the baby's bringing the seed. All right, baby girl. Come on, give it up for the babies, y'all. Give it up for the babies. Get it in your hand. Get it in your hand. Get it in your hand. You can text and do it as well. I want you to get it in your hand. I'm sure they'll put it on the screen. And as you're putting it down, say, Lord, I believe, but help my, help my unbelief. Pastor, I ain't got $10. Just, just come, man, come. Just, just come, come, come touch this step. Somebody's depending on you to activate your faith. Somebody's depending on you to, 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 to get your life right. It's a child depending on the mother and the dad to get their life right. Because now what's going to happen is my, my life going to be better because of the act of faith. Not believing. I get it. I know we believe God. God, I believe you. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I believe. Help my unbelief. Come activate that faith. song says, I believe. I believe, I believe. I believe, I believe. I believe, I believe in you. I believe, I believe in you. Through you, I can do anything. I can do all things. I want somebody to begin to clap your hands for Jesus, right? Where you now, if you believe. Nothing is impossible. Somebody want to be saved? I want you to come quickly. Come on this front row quickly. If you want to be saved, come quickly. You want prayer? Come quickly. This is your moment. This is your time. If you want to be saved, if you want prayer, if you want this to be your church home and you want to join, come quickly. This is your opportunity. Yeah. Clap, let's clap. If we ain't them, let's, let's. Yeah. Just anoint them, prophet. Anoint them. Just anoint them in the name of Jesus. Quickly, just anoint them. Just rub your hands together in the name of Jesus. Yeah. They're going to go back and talk to them for a few minutes. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Clap it up for them. As they come, just anoint them as they come. They can have a seat right here. This room, just kind of had them slide down. Yep. Yeah. Instagram. For real. 
All right? So I want you all to rub your hands together. Repeat after me. Say, Lord, forgive me for all of my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Created me a clean heart. Oh, God, and renew a right spirit within me. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God have raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And I need all my prayer warriors to just point. We got different situations up here. Um, but this young lady, man, we prayed for her the other night, little Aaliyah. Seven years old, right? Seven years old. And, um, going through some things and we're just believing, not just for little Aaliyah, but for all these men and women that may be going through. And could we give God praise for the fact that, that he saved them, right? Yeah. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for the sins of us all. All right. So I want you all to lift your hands right where you all are. Lift your hands. All right. Lord, we thank you for your sons and your daughters. Lord, let your power flow. Move by your power. Move by your might. Lord, you know what they're, they're going through. Lord, touch Lord Leah right now. Thank you for making her crooked road at the age of seven, making it straight and raising her up in Jesus' name. Lord, touch your sons right now. You know what they're dealing with. Lord, we believe, but we're asking that you help our, help our unbelief. In the name of Jesus, do it for your sons, do it for your daughters right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you believe that, come on, clap your hands for Jesus. So listen, family, listen. Um, we, we got a lot more on that, on this faith thing, man, and we're going to um, continue to drill this into you. Um, you all can go back with Elder real quick. He'll take you all back. Listen, you all, we have um, um, somebody, uh, two ladies. Y'all can go back with the, um, we're going to talk with you just real, real quick, right, real brief. All right. Thanks, sis. Appreciate that. Come on, give it up for them again, y'all. Give it up for them again. Listen, um, Tuesday night, 7 o'clock p.m., Thursdays, remember, ages 11 through 17. We'll have adult Bible study, but 11 through 17, um, they'll be over there. They're going to be there before 7 o'clock. Amen. All right, you might say, well, what about the people that's under 11? Let them sit by you and learn the word, right? That's what we got for them, okay? Um, we have a wedding. Amanda and Keith, an amazing young couple. Come on, give it up for them. They're going to marry at 1 o'clock, so this is what we're going to do. I would love to just, I want all visitors.